Hello friends, this is Utz, and today we're doing the quick killer guide for the plague. The plague has an interesting combination of both regular and range attacks. She's mechanically and strategically complex, and as a result, her skill ceiling is very high. Her teachable perks are fantastic, you've got some gen defense, some help with tracking, and a fun gimmicky stealth perk, so she's a great pick if you're looking for good teachables. In terms of weaknesses, the plague does come with a few. She has a difficult early and late game that you really need to play and plan around. She's very demanding, as we said, both mechanically and strategically, so you'll be making a lot of mistakes in terms of decision making or execution that you'll need to polish over hours and hours of practice. And she almost has no element of surprise at all. She's very tall, she gives many sound cues, even the props in the map will warn survivors that a plague is coming. So if you're looking for some kind of surprise stealth killer, this is definitely not the one. But when it comes to strengths, she possesses many remarkable ones. She counters virtually every healing perk and item in the game, which is amazing. She can end chases fast, even in some otherwise very, very safe loops that would be very safe for survivors to run around other killers. And she makes altruism extremely dangerous. Survivors more often than not will be injured and won't be able to help each other. But even when they're not, they can still go down very, very quickly thanks to her extremely punishing power. And now that we know all of that, let's get into some basic stats to really understand her. The Plague, in many regards, has many standard characteristics. She has a standard 32 meter terror radius, she moves at a standard 150 movement speed, but as we said, she does stick out quite a bit. She's extremely tall, one of the tallest characters in the game, especially with some of her crowns. She emits uh, incense smoke anywhere she goes that survivors can see, and when she's powered up, she'll also emit these red particles that are very easy to pick up from survivors. Her speed goes a little bit all over the place when she uses her power. When holding M2, the plate initiates her vomiting, and from 115, she gets slowed down to 90%, and then moves at 100 tail while holding it or while releasing it. After that is done, she has a small cooldown again, where she's also a bit slower, and then goes back to her normal 115 speed. You can do a full charge to cover a large area with your vomit, or you can also fill it up just a small percentage to spit just a little bit. If you release the vomit too early, it will actually cancel, but you can cancel it yourself also at any point during the charge by pressing the attack button. By default, the plague has her infecting green vomit, the vile purge, and when she powers up, this turns into the damaging red vomit, the corrupt purge. Both of these work exactly the same, so you don't need to learn different timings or anything like that. As a general rule also, the add-ons for the corrupt purge only affect the corrupt purge, but the add-ons for the vile purge actually affect both of them. So let's finally get to understand what these two different vomits do. The green perch basically infects anything it touches. You can puke on pretty much every single thing that survivors can interact with, and it will remain infected for 35 seconds by default. Any survivor that touches that item or object will become infected. You can also puke directly on the survivor to infect them. If survivors do any action other than standing still or walking any action at all, they will gain infection over time and get fully infected in about 50 seconds again by default. You can also vomit on them continuously to speed up the process very dramatically, but note that the killer does not see the progress meter of the infection. This is something that only the survivors can see, killer will instead have to guess how far it is. Once the meter is fully filled, the survivors will become injured if they weren't already, and acquire the broken status effect. Once this happens, survivors cannot heal by any conventional means. They also start coughing louder than when they were infected, and are much easier to track as a result, both visually and by sound. At this point, they also infect any other survivor or object that they come in contact with. The only way survivors can heal from this state is to find a clean fountain called Pool of Devotion and drink from it. This corrupts the fountain, turns it red, and makes it unusable for the next survivor. There's always six of these fountains in the map, and by default, one of them already starts corrupted at the beginning of the trial. These corrupted pools are very important, because drinking from them is how the play gets her second, more dangerous power, the Corrupt Purge. The Corrupt Purge doesn't infect survivors or items, but it does damage them. You can puke through survivors and get multiple hits with a single vomit, but you cannot hit the same target twice with just one string of vomit, don't forget. By default, each Corrupt Purge lasts 60 seconds. Do be careful though, because if you get pallet stun, you will lose it immediately. 
if the survivors somehow corrupt all six fountains at the same time, you will also immediately obtain the corrupt perch, whatever it is you're standing, but all of the fountains will be reverted immediately. So this is something that you generally want to avoid. As you'll see as we move forward, much of your success with Plague depends on how quickly and efficiently you can infect all of the survivors. So we're going to go through some practical scenarios, some real life examples that you'll find yourself in from most to least favorable so that you'll know what to do in each. And the most favorable by far is when you find yourself body blocking a survivor. You've got them pinned against some corner, they cannot move at all, this is an ideal situation. Take all the time you need, fully infect them, them M1, bam. They're down easy like that. The next best thing that can happen is when you catch a survivor that is locked in a very long animation that they cannot or will not stop doing for whatever reason. This is really, really easy. You also just fully infect them and when you're done, down them. A slightly less favorable situation is when you catch a survivor in a shorter animation, like for example, medium vaulting a window. These animations are too short for you to fully infect the survivor for the most part, but you can still try to do as much puking as you can. You might get 50 or 60% of the meter filled, and that might be enough to fully infect them if you had infected them a little bit prior. You can also try to fully infect them if you have certain add-ons and you're familiar with how the meter feels. If you are successful, then you'll be able to M1 them the moment that you catch up after that. Another scenario is when you find a survivor in a complete dead zone, where they're not really pinned against anything, but they also have no access to pallets or windows anywhere near. In a situation like this, it is very likely that the survivor will start dodging side to side and it will be very hard to infect them fully, but it's up to you to decide. Most of the times in a situation like this, I will puke on the survivor a little bit, then hit them with a basic attack and watch them go somewhere else. But if you feel like your add-ons are good enough or if the survivor was already partially infected, sometimes it might be worth it to try to shoot a lot of vomit until they are fully infected. An even more common situation is when you're trying to infect the survivor that is at a loop, somewhere with windows, pallets, where survivors commonly run you. In a situation like this, you will most likely try to go for a direct hit with your vomit to get them infected, although sometimes in very challenging loops, it might actually be more efficient to try to infect the window and the pallet. If the survivors go through these and touch them, they will become infected, so you will force them to go elsewhere where they might be easier to infect or to go through them and actually get infected. Another really favorable situation for you is when you have an immobilized survivor that's either on the ground or on the hook. These survivors are very easy to infect, they're basically standing targets. The only issue is that you cannot infect them fully, you can only infect them partially. Finally, of course, the hardest survivors to infect are the ones that are really far away from you that you don't even see, or the ones that are in very, very safe areas or very, very safe structures that are really hard to get to. Don't spend too much time trying to infect these survivors. Instead, try to do it indirectly. You can try to aim for generators that they might be working on to see if you can infect them or at least delay them. And you can also infect other survivors that are closer to you. And eventually, when they interact with these fully infected survivors, those survivors will get infected as well. Knowing all of these ways to infect survivors and choosing the most appropriate one in each situation is very important because your general goal as a plague, the most important thing you need to do is to get all survivors fully infected as early in the game as possible. When everyone gets broken, you have several things going for you. All of the survivors will be easier to track, they will all go down with one hit, obviously, and this means that they won't be able to go for unhooks in front of your face, they will have a much harder time finishing generators in front of your face, and they'll need to drop pallets very quickly and, for the most part, won't be able to be very greedy. This will often push survivors into cleansing in fountains, and that's when you get your corrupt punch, your real power. And God forbid, if you already have your power by the time everybody is injured, you will begin to down them very quickly and they will be dropping like flies. So, if this is so great, how do we achieve it? How do we get everybody injured? Well, each game is different, each game will play out a different way, but these are some examples of how it could come about. You could find three survivors and try to infect all of them a little bit, then start immediately pressure them, go for hits, see if you can get some pallets out of the way, stall them a little bit, eventually you'll have three people fully infected. If you infect a couple survivors and then one of them makes a mistake that allows you to fully infect them, then you can go for it, then down them and hook them, go for the other infected survivor, and that way, one of the other two survivors who is not infected will have to go for the rescue. And when they touch the fully infected survivor on the hook, they will become infected themselves. 
You'll also have instances where you infect one or two survivors and you suspect that the other survivors are hiding and waiting to work on a nearby gen. In a situation like this, you can infect the generator and this will force those survivors to either work on it and get infected immediately or to wait it out and move and relocate, which will buy you time and will make the other people get fully infected. Another risky approach that you could take, if you see the opportunity to do so, is to drink up from one of your corrupted pools very early in the game and try to go for multiple downs at the start. And then when your power has already run out, you can then infect survivors on the ground or on the hook by aiming under their feet, as we've seen. This only infects survivors a little bit, but since they'll come out of the hook injured and they'll know that they'll eventually get broken, they probably won't even bother to heal, so it will give you pretty much the same result. Only do this if you really, really think you're going to be able to get the value of that corrupt perch early. And now for the three quick tips for the plague. The first one is the one I see most plagues struggle with, and it is to be very aggressive early on. Many casual plague players don't realize just how big of a mistake it is to just tunnel vision one single survivor and let the rest do gems. If you would focus on one survivor and then you fail a bunch of times to fully infect them and you clumsily chase them over and over and then eventually you get infected and you drop them, you will be wasting a huge amount of time. You will get no health states early out of other survivors, you will have no pallets dropped, the gens will be done very quickly and by the time you manage to infect everybody, they'll just power through the final gens and at the end they'll start drinking from the fountains and spread out. At this point, even if you try to use your corrupt perch, that time that you spend going there to pick it up will give everybody time to power the exegates and just leave. You need to stall and pressure survivors early on at any cost to avoid these unwinnable endgame scenarios. And of course, part of pressuring survivors is downing them very quickly, and that's why you must learn your timings and hitboxes. The Plague's power is not different from the Huntress's. She has a very precise charge timing, uh, projectile speed, and a particular arc, all of which are very unique and you need to get acquainted with and used to over many hundreds of hours. It would really benefit you to get into a private match with a friend and practice general chases and practice different shots in different maps so you'd learn all the tricks to down survivors even in places where you wouldn't think it's possible. You will find some really really useful stuff practicing. For example, you can learn that you can arc your shot over obstacles to hit survivors that are not even visible. You can also puke through small holes here and there to infect survivors that are not expecting it. You can also charge up the puke more than usual to hit multiple survivors or to even counter a dead heart if you see it coming. And of course, as we hinted earlier, you can infect and hit survivors through each other. So don't forget that body blocking does not work against the plague. You can fully infect survivors through each other and you can also hit them with a the corrupt purge both at the same time. And the final tip for the plague is to plan around your pools. At the start of the match, you should immediately look around yourself and take mental note of all of your corrupted pools, which without add-ons will be only one. At some point, your idea is to drink from this one pool and then get the most out of those 60 seconds, so you'll need to really plan around it. You can try to hook someone in that area and then drink up, or chase someone into it and then use it mid-chase, or even use it at the start of the match if you really know where you're going and you think you can get multiple downs out of it. The thing that you most certainly want to avoid is drinking from one of your fountains, perhaps your only fountain, and then realizing that you don't know where anybody is. This will absolutely destroy your momentum, so you must time your corrupt purchase really, really well. Sometimes one of your fountains will spawn in a really bad spot that's really far away from the action or in a very awkward place to access and this really sucks when it happens. The best thing you can do honestly is either drink from it immediately if you get any chance or more likely infect survivors a lot very efficiently so that they'll be forced to drink in other fountains and then hope that those fountains are in more accessible, more convenient places. Remember that when any survivor cleanses, you'll hear a sound cue and you'll see that that fountain lights up as a white aura. If you keep track of which fountains are on and off throughout the match, then immediately you'll be able to tell when anybody drinks where exactly that happened. And I think that with that, I've told you almost everything I know about the plague. You'll still need to put in a lot of hours to get really good with her, but that will be up to you now. You'll also need to learn her add-ons really, really well. They are very fun and complex, and if you need a little bit of help with that, I have a video covering all of them right here that I recommend you check out. But that will be all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next quick killer guide.